It's in the middle of summer now and 100 degrees or more, but grape season. So these are a little bit uh, unripe to make it worth my while gathering. When they're green or this lighter purple color, they're gonna have a much more sour taste and actually have a slight burning sensation in the mouth when you try to eat them. You wanna get them in the whole fruit is a dark purple. Now the best way to gather them is to pluck off an entire cluster. Because if you try to pull off just the ripe ones, they often, well, that one didn't do it very well, but there we go. They'll split open like that, and they'll all, even if they come off nicely, they're more likely to get smushed in your basket or bag when you're carrying them and leak out the juice. And you can do with them just like you would do any other type of grape. Make raisins, uh, wine, juice, preserves, jelly, you name it. So wild grapes in general were obviously uh, a great food resource because of all the fleshy fruits, grapes produce the most. You can gather by far the most from them. And they can just be full of grapes. I don't know if you can see, but there's a ton of grapes in this little vine here. The challenge though is always finding one low enough to the ground that you can reach. It's really frustrating when you're walking along the trail and you see a bunch smushed on the trail and the way high 40 feet above you so if you see some during the year that are low to the ground maybe you're on a fence or like here cascading down a tree just keep note of it and you can come back I have my established spots for getting grapes and if you want to you can get a five gallon bucket full in uh, maybe an hour so it's a really great food resource to have and for that reason it was extensively used by American Indians including the Apache Asinai, Caddo, Cherokee, Cheyenne, Chippewa, Comanche, Concow, Dakota, Iroquois, Kiowa, Menominee, Navajo, Namlaki, Ojibwe, Omaha, Ponca, Pawnee, Pomo, Quapaw, Wailaki, Winnebago, Yokia, and Yuki. Those are all known for sure to eat grapes and probably many more. Probably anyone who has grapes in their territory would be eating of them. In fact, the first Europeans to come to the American continent in the southeast traveled all over and they were marked many occasions on the massive amounts of raisins that were stored up by all the cultures that they were visiting, which, you know, of course they stole all the raisins they could. So drying the fruit was probably the most common method of preservation of them. Uh, the dried fruits could be eaten as is, or boiled, or put into a stew. What the Comanche would did would be to mash them up some, moisten them a bit, maybe add some fat, and form them into cakes. And they would put that cake by the fire and cook it, and they could eat it just like that. And they were, of course, made into jelly and preserves in more recent years. And I know other people make uh, wine and juice and other stuff, I guess, out of the fruits. But it's, food uses are not limited to the grapes. So you can actually eat all grape leaves. And I think they're pretty good. They got a nice tart taste, a little bit sweet. But for some species, such as this one, which is Mustang grape, Metis mustangensis, and you can identify it by this very uh, pubescent whitish underside, and it's got this sort of spider web stuff on top that's to preserve moisture in the hot Texas summer. But if you eat a mature leaf of this, you'll probably want to spit out the quid after just sucking out the juice because it's, it's very tough. But there's other species with thinner, lighter leaves, like Vetus monticolos in this area, and I can eat an entire mature leaf of that. But the young leaves you can just eat entire. And the whole plant is actually technically edible. Uh, the fresh shoots of Vetus vulpina were eaten by the Iroquois without peeling or anything, just whole. Now this one's going to be a little bit too fibrous and tough to be worth doing that but there's other species that have you know, fleshier, juicier stems, and you can eat those. Or just, heck, chew on it and 
positive. So the Karak in the mountains of California would use the leaves of Vetus californica, which can actually get much larger, even these can get much larger. They would use them to line earth ovens. So the earth oven is when you dig a pit and then you put some rocks at the bottom of the pit, put a fire on top of the rocks and let it burn down and the heat transfers to the rocks. And you will put your food on top of that to slow cook it and then you're gonna bury it afterwards. But you don't want to get your food dirty so the way to do it is to line it with some uh, vegetative matter. So wet grass was very commonly used, but the Karak would use grape leaves for that, which is a great choice because you can find large ones and they're edible and delicious. And the Asinai would use grape leaves to cover their cooking pots. Now it might not have been grape leaves, it could have been uh, green briar leaves, uh, possibly something else unlikely, but the most likely species would be, or type of plant would be grape leaves. So the sap of two different species of grape, Vetus cinerea and Vetus vulpina, was drunk by the Kiowa, Dakota, Omaha, Pawnee, Ponca, and Winnebago. And it, it was done just like you do a, a maple tree. So you wait till it's the spring and the leaves are still down, but the sap is coming back up because it's ready to bud out. And you tap the tree at that time to catch the, the rising sap and you can just drink it as is. And it's said to taste uh, much like the grapes. I know I haven't tried that yet. I'm gonna try it this next spring and, and see how it goes. But that same, sap would be used by the Ojibwe for stomach complaints, like stomach ache, you just drink some. Uh, Ojibwe women would also drink a decoction of the twigs in order to more quickly expel the afterbirth. The, the Menominee would actually take a grape and then drip it like that into their eyes, eye drops, in order to get rid of foreign matter which had gotten there. And they even also sometimes use an entire seed of the grape and put that in the eye. And it was said to grab a hold of foreign matter, especially something like a, a wild rice hull when they're, they're winnowing. There was a few uses for the vine stems as well. So the Atakapa, Kashayapomo, and Shasta all use the stems of the vine as lashings in house construction. So it could be used, for example, to interweave poles to build the walls of the house or to just tie the horizontal elements to the vertical one. And now the Apalachee use grapevines as lashings and construction, constructing fortifications to fortify against the besieging Spaniards in the DeSoto party in 1540. The Pomo, Wailaki, Konkau, Kalpela, Yokia, Yuki, Namlaki, they would use it for the rims of basketry because it makes it's very flexible and hard. So you just wind it around and it makes a really solid, good basket rim. They would also use it for the regular uh, warp and weft of basketry, but you would need to split it first for that. Now, the Comanche name for wild grapes would be Natsumukwe or Nosi Natsumukwe. And the Teton Dakota called at least two different species of grapes, Vetus cinerea and Vetus vulpina, they called it Chan Wiape, which means tree twine. <laughs>